Ben Pam here, welcome to Nightbreed Metal Radio, a special edition. Uh, next weekend is the Electric Eye Festival at Frio Social with a stack of excellent metal bands. And uh, in this video, I speak to four of them, starting with Marco from Crypt Crawler, then your album The Immortal Realm just came out and we get into it, here he is. The Immortal Realm, the third album is out Friday the 13th of September great day that's cool <laughs> um yes. was there, yeah was there any uh different sounds or ideas you had in mind when you guys were writing for this one i think um as we go through every album we just want to keep uh not not exactly retreading everything we've done we want to keep bringing in new ideas and whatnot um this album here um we wanted to pretty much the idea was to bring every track and make them hard hitting um try and leave out any filler tracks we wanted to cut down the runtime of the album as a whole um so the album is about 33 minutes um eight songs and it's just all killer no filler as yeah, they say that's cool um and uh dan jackson joined you guys last year right um do you think him joining the band has changed the sound or the dynamics at all for you guys so this current album um he actually didn't write any of the content on there it was okay. all um because this, this album had been brewing since uh future usurper was released so Jordan Kappa and um, Zach James had written all the like the vast majority of the guitars. Lewis Oliver also wrote some a drummer. Um, Dan did actually do a solo on the album though, so his solo is on uh, track two, summary execution. Um, but we have started demoing some new songs, and the sound um, has evolved again. Um, and yeah, we just want to keep uh, like yeah, like I said before, not retreading the path of what we did before. Just keep um, elevating the Cryptcrawler sound, but making sure that everything still sounds like Cryptcrawler. Yeah, cool. Um, how does writing work for you guys? Like, uh, like um, you know, lyrics and ideas. Do you guys chat about that stuff, or like, how does that work? So in the past, um, well, what we used to have, like for for example, to the grave, um, myself and Jordan would literally sit down in front of the computer and just write all the songs out together, um, and then we'd bring it to the guys, and then um, drums would go over the top after. Um, but we'd have like our demo drums already down and whatnot. Um, Future Surfer, it's sort of kind of continued that same sort of um, route. Um, with a few little uh, entries where Zach would come in and um, write a few riffs and whatnot. Um, Lewis had a bit more involvement with um, some of the song structures and whatnot. This album here, we did actually um, get in a room together and we just all collaborated together and um, wrote the songs together, which was really sick. Um, so a lot of the songs, um, there'd be like four or five, like or maybe all of us would be writing on the song um, rather than just uh, two people like it was at the start. Um, so yeah, these songs are definitely elevated because of that. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Dan Goldsworthy's album cover looks great, the whole green thing, that's cool. Um, he's created some excellent album covers for like Corpse Grinder and Auden Ogan, you know. Um, how'd you get together with Dan? That's pretty neat. Yeah. I think we're just looking um, through a lot of artists and seeing what, we, what we'd like to see. Um, I absolutely love um, what he's done with Aborted. Um, so we hit him up before he'd released the latest Aborted album. Um, so it was just when they had released uh, the single, um, the previous single. Um, and as soon as I saw that cover, I was like, this needs to be what we're going to go for in the future, especially as well seeing um, uh, some other work that he'd done um, for Terry Butler's band, um, In Human Condition. Um, I saw that album cover and it was very um, like a nod towards death as well, the leprosy era. And we saw that, I was like, that's sick. Um, and we just knew that, like, seeing that old school vibe that he's done, as well as the um, newer bands, modern modern bands, um, that he was just perfect for us. And we came up with the idea, and it all just went from there. Yeah, that's cool. And I saw that creature on the cover's got a name, right? What's the story there? Is there, like, some kind of... Is that tied to the lyrics or anything? Like, what's that going there? I remember when you uh, interviewed us um, a couple of years ago, you actually yeah. said to me, hey, was that um, is that the Crypt Crawler on the album cover? Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and at the time, I was a bit like, yeah, you know, that actually is the Crypt Crawler. <laughs> so I might even I might even um, credit you as the, as the <laughs> idea behind that. Oh, um, yeah. But no, it actually, um, yeah, uh, really uh, striking into that lore behind him. I'm creating like a whole uh, world and um, it, it all ties into some of the lyrics as well. Um, yeah, there's going to be more to come from that. Um, there's definitely like a whole sort of uh, narrative that I'm putting towards him um, and it's going to continue to the next album as well. Um, so yeah, that, that all ties in lyrically and whatnot. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and I saw that that green slimy looking vinyl. That's come out really well, man. Um, who put your vinyl together? That looks really good. Uh, so we went through um, a company in Sydney called Replicat. Um, oh, yeah, they've yeah. done our CDs and our vinyls, and yeah, they've absolutely hit it out of the park with this um this album. Both uh, CDs and vinyl look great. Yeah, that's cool. 
Um, so three singles out already, yeah. Um, great video for Shrine of Sacrifice, all the gigs and kind of, you know, behind the scenes stuff. That room with Cheers. the drums looks like a cool setup. Where'd you, where'd you record your drums? That's a great looking space. Yeah, we recorded at, um, uh, Sumo, um, sound recording in, uh, in Osmond Park. Yeah, like off Hector Street. That was, um, really awesome place. And, uh, yeah, Lewis nailed that in, we had like, I think it was meant to be three days, but he nailed it in two. So that was wow, awesome. Cool. That's great, man. And um, yeah, it looks like uh, some of it was recorded where you're sitting right now, yeah, with all the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the the home DIY studio. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and what about mastering and stuff like that? How'd you guys uh, put all that together? So um, this is the first album or EP, etc., that I haven't mixed and mastered. Okay. Um, we went. We originally hit up uh, Jacob Hansen. Um, he's done bands like Aborted, Catatonia, um, Black Dahlia Murder. Especially uh, that Nightbringers album is something that we were really like aiming towards um, in terms of like sonically and sound wise. Um, so we hit him up, asking him to mix and master. Um, unfortunately, uh, we couldn't afford the full <laughs> mixing and mastering costs. Um, but he suggested a friend of his to mix it, and then he'd master it. Um, and yeah, we heard what his. Um, uh, who he recommended, which was Winter Pryor um, from the UK at Sphinx Studios. And uh, yeah, we heard some of the stuff that he'd done and it sounded sick. So um, we trusted him and yeah, it all, it all came together really well. Yeah, cool. Um, the other single, uh, Higher Society, it's got a guitar solo from James Murphy, right? Like he's played with like Cancer and Obituary, Death, Testament, that's huge, man. Like, um, how'd you get together with James? That's amazing. Yeah, this is a really cool story, actually. Um, I'm still mind blown about the whole situation. Um, so we had a fan from Sydney uh, hit us up, um, Rael. Um, he's an absolute legend. Uh, he's actually friends with um, or knows someone who's mutual friends with James Murphy. Um, he ended up getting in contact with James Murphy and he suggested our stuff for him to listen to, which was sick. Um, James Murphy ended up commenting on one of our YouTube videos for Force Fed to the Dead. Um, which I was like, oh shit, like, you know, I can't believe this is actually happening. Um, and Ray was suggested about um, getting James to do a guest solo on the album, and it just all went from there. And couldn't be happy with how it turned out. Yeah, man. Um, I saw you guys have a Crypt Crawler card game too, right? Like, no, no, that's uh, just a play mat. Um, ah, the mat, sure, yeah. Okay. I mean, unless you're, unless you're already inside my head, because I'm already thinking about the future. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> because, cool. yeah, I do have a card game that I'm thinking about doing in the future, but, um, oh, but nice, no, that's just a, pl a play mat for, for Magic yeah. the Gathering and oh, cool. um, Yu-Gi-Oh! and all those sort of card games, but, yeah, specifically Magic the Gathering, and it also acts as a desk mat as well. <laughs> oh, perfect, there you go, nice, that's cool. <laughs> um, so, Quick Coral is hitting the road next week, yeah, with um, Ashen, uh, playing Sydney, Melbourne, a couple of big shows back in WA, which we'll get to. Um, and Brisbane, Gold Coast, and Adelaide. Uh, are you hitting any places you haven't played before on this tour? Uh, we're hitting up Gold Coast, which you haven't played before. Um, cool. Just to quickly clar clarify as well, um, Ashton aren't able to make the Sydney and Melbourne shows, okay, sure. um, but they will be doing the late later half of the tour. Okay. Um, but yeah, we haven't played um, Gold Coast before, so I'm really looking forward to playing there. Um, yeah. The rest of the places we've played before and can't wait to go back there. Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, so w one of the big Perth shows, of course, is uh, you're supporting Nile. That's huge, man. Like, um, that's got to be one of your biggest support slots so far, right? Like, yeah, between them and Obituary, um, as well as going across to Hamasonic earlier this year, um, which is also incredible. Yeah, yeah, nice. I uh, so tell us about Hamasonic. That must have been amazing. Yeah, Hamasonic was um, was mind blowing to say the least. Um, we literally got the call to to head over there maybe three to four weeks before. Um, one of our, uh, our guitarist Zach had to rush his passport through, which was sick. Um, and yeah, we just went over there, um, literally got in the morning of our show date, um, had hardly any sleep, blistering hot conditions, but we just went on stage, um, hammered, out the, hammered out the set, and yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience. Rushed off stage, um, and we went back, um, through the back areas to see the suffocation side of stage, which was sick. Yeah, nice, that's cool. Yeah, but yeah the whole experience in total was just incredible. Amazing. That's cool, man. Do you think you'll uh, make it back over there at all? I'd, I'd love to. Um, we've had some um, some people hit us up, um, like Indonesian fans, saying, "Oh, please come back to Indonesia. Please, please come back to Indonesia." And we'd love to, but yeah, just see what what opportunities come our way, I guess. Yeah, cool, man. Um, and of course, the other WA show, which um, every band on this YouTube video is a part of, uh, is Electric Eye Festival in Frio on October fifth. Um, what can people look forward to? Like, you've got three albums and material to draw from now. What kind of set list are you guys putting together? 
so that's going to be our official album launch for yes. our home state of WA, which is I cannot wait for. Um, especially with Psychoptic playing, it's going to be incredible as yeah. well. Um, but yeah, in terms of our set, we're going to play a whole heap of new songs. Um, uh, I think we cover quite a bit of the new album, um, as well as um, some fan favourites and whatnot. From like we're pretty much covering everything across our discography, including um, Blood Sustenance EP as well. Um, but yeah, everything's covered um, with a heavy focus on the new stuff for our fans to enjoy. Yeah, beautiful man. Cool. I look forward to it. Um, look, Marco, thanks for your time. You got a lot of good times ahead, man. I'm excited for you. That'll be fun, man. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for the interview, man. Cool. Thanks a lot, man. I'll see you soon, eh? Have a good one. Yeah. See you soon. Cheers to Marco and links below for details for the new Crypt Crawler stuff. Up next, uh, I chat with Jason from Psychroptic and we get into uh, Domination Campaign as well, his other band. Here he is, this is Jason on Nightbreed Metal Radio. Yeah, how are you man? How's it going? Yeah, good, good. Been good, good. Busy, busy with shows and stuff lately, which has been really cool. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, I saw um, you guys played a bunch of Eastern State shows recently, right? Yeah, we did. Uh, we did two shows in Melbourne, two uh, Hobart, Launceston, uh, Brisbane, and Sydney. So yeah, we've been out oh, three yeah three weekends in a row, and then a couple of weekends off before we hit the road up to Perth. Yeah, nice man. That's good. That's good. Um, and I read too, you got a huge run of US shows coming up like early next year, right? Like with Nile, yeah. Six Feet Under, Embryonic Autopsy. That's huge, yeah. man. Like, was it like 37 shows or something? That's I massive. Think it's, I think it might have even been more than that. So yeah, I'm, right. I'm not actually I'm not actually going on that one. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, right. Uh, so we've got um, Jace Kaiser. He'll be, he'll be handling vocal duties on that one. It's a bit, yeah. uh, it's a bit long for me at the moment with... Uh, Got a couple of teenage kids and business to run back yeah, home. Fair so enough, man. Yeah, yeah. Real, real life cuts me off sometimes. Man. Yeah, shit, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Bro. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> um, what's the uh? So the Eastern State tour. What's the set list looking like? Like, have you? Do you guys have like, like a show you kind of locked in? You know? Yeah, we we're gonna be, be be playing the same set list as we've been playing. Well. It's, far as I know what we've been playing for these last six shows um pretty much we, we're not we haven't been playing anything off the first three albums anymore uh so basically okay. from bourbon on really and I think I mean as as we go we're kind of ditching more and more of the old stuff in favor of the new so yeah, sure. it's still still yeah well we got two two or three off inherited repression and yeah, one off Observant, a few off Kingdom, a few off Divine Council. So yeah, it's, I mean it's a good mix. It's a pretty pretty upbeat sort of set that we're doing at the moment. So it's cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, nice one. Um, it's been a, a couple of years since the last release. Is there anything kind of in the works at the moment for you guys? Yeah, yeah, we've been we've been hard at it. Um, so we had taught our bass player because he's from New Jersey. Um, mm. We had him in the country for, he was down for, I think about a month, or oh, best cool. part of a month. So he, mm. he was down, he's tracked, I think I think we're about seven songs written at this point. So yeah, we've sort of, we've sort of started, we've been recording drums, bits of vocals, bits of guitar. So it's a bit all over the place at the moment, but yeah, we are, we are actually, pretty deep in the process of, of working on an album at the moment yeah which is cool but it kind of um i mean joe was just talking about it the other day we kind of it, it was good having these shows because we hadn't done any for a while and it meant we managed to get todd into the country to do his parts but it kind of it's kind of made it hard as well because me and joe were starting to get a bit of a flow with the album and then we got interrupted <laughs> with uh, all this yeah, yeah. stuff but you know <laughs> It's that big balancing act. So I think sort of, yeah, I think I think when when we've got this show done in WA, then I, I think the plan is to really knuckle down and get stuck right into getting getting the writing all finalised and start, you know, doing some proper recording. Yeah, cool, man. Oh, that's good. Um, when do you reckon, I know it's probably hard to predict, but when do you reckon we'll hear something, you know? Well, we're hoping, 
if all goes to plan uh, and nothing ever seems to but but we'd like we're, we're sort of hoping we can have a single out by the end of the year but i mean whether or not that pans out or not yeah. who knows so but yeah i mean that's at this stage that's what we're working towards sort of sort of getting starting to roll out some singles late in the year yeah cool um, and how, how's writing work? Like, is it just you two kind of working on it or are the other guys involved at all with that sort of things? Joe's, Joe's kind of the mastermind with it. I mean, he he basically writes the backbone of the song, sends it out to everybody. We start building our parts on it and everyone sort of writes their own parts. And then when it all starts getting put together, I mean, Joe generally, you know, what starts out as how do I describe it? You know, like the the songs he, or the demos he sends out to us, they end up, they, they do evolve quite a lot, like all the all the riffing and stuff like that. So it's, it's I suppose, yeah, I, I guess it just starts starts with Joe's backbone of it and then it just, it just evolves into its own thing. But Joe generally, I mean, because he's a, he, he does all the producing, recording, mixing, mastering and everything on the album, he's kind of, overseeing everything i guess and mm. he he kind of makes sure that the other you know me and dave we're not slacking off with our parts and and everything's up to par basically with with what his you know grandiose vision of everything is so mm. so basically he's he's the mastermind and we're just there to sprinkle our little <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. our little bits in there yeah yeah that's cool nice um, and of course, uh, domination campaign yourself and Joe as well, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the second album, The Storm of Steel, came out January this year. It's on my yeah. it's on my mix. I've been listening, man. It's good. Um, how was it writing, recording this one? Like, was it was it very different to Onward Glory? Like the approach and you know the recording. Well, it was it a bit in the way that I mean, with with Onward to Glory, I that was, some of those songs I've been working on and. And sort of had demos of uh, years, you know that that thing had sort of been that had been one of those things that I talked about for so long, and I had a few songs and some demos done up, but I never sort of did anything with it. And that I suppose the the catalyst to actually get me off my ass to to get it actually, you know, into a, a real thing was. Um, Joe was actually building a new studio at his house yeah. and I'm a painter by trade but I do a lot of plastering as well and Joe needed work done on the studio so I said well how, how about I come and do the work for you and you record an album for me yeah nice he said yep all right and so yeah so we kind of did it that way and originally the idea I was going to put drum programming on it but then Joe kind of put his hand up and said, no, nah, fuck that, I'll drum on it, because he's really good with rock drumming and stuff like that, which is, you know, a lot of what it needed. So mm. that's sort of how that one came about. But with the, the second album, with um, Storm of Steel, it was basically, that that album was actually finished a couple of years before its release. Yeah. So that was, that was all done during sort of COVID times when we couldn't tour and Basically, I think I had the I had a storm of steel finished. I think I think it was maybe the week after the first album actually came out. So because there was like so many delays and stuff with pressing plants and stuff, the albums were actually done really close together. But just yeah, because delays with labels and release and stuff like that, I think they were like two and a half, three years apart. So. So the second album, I suppose to answer your question, the second album just happened really quick. You know, as soon as I got that first one done, basically no touring, no live shows. So I was just basically using up all my free time writing, recording, working in the studio with Joe, just trying to keep busy that way. So that one just was like bang, 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 got it done. And it was sick. And I'm actually in the process of writing the third album at the moment as well. So yeah, nice. I got so much shit on the go. Yeah, that's good, man. Yeah, yeah. But it's cool. It's cool. And it's, it's good fun. Like it, whereas, you know, years ago, I used to only ever work on psychroptic stuff. And, you know, now I've got, um, we've got domination campaign stuff, psychroptic stuff. I've got 
black metal band called Permafog that I also right. play guitar in. And so it's really good now because when I used to get stuck on psychropic stuff when I was writing, it was kind of like I'd just stop my productivity altogether. Whereas now it's like if I sit down to work on some psychropic stuff and I'm getting nowhere with it or, you know, I'm just not feeling it. It's like, all right, pick up the guitar, work on some domination campaign or work on some permafog. So basically it keeps, I don't know, have, having sort of three things on the go at the moment now, I'm finding I'm being really productive and, mm. you know, it just it helps, it helps keep the creative process going, I think, which is, it's been really awesome because it, it had been so many years since I've been doing guitar and stuff in bands. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. I'm the same, man. It's, you know, it's good fun to have different things going. Yeah, you know, yeah. And your it's, brain it's, active, you know. It, it, it <laughs> yeah, 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 and it's yeah. great. And I find as as I get older, because, I mean, I'm not touring as much as what I used to with Psychroptic, so I'm, I've really, you know, for, for years and years with Psychroptic, it was kind of like hit the studio, write and record an album in a fairly short period of time, and then you spend two to two and a half years just touring relentlessly on that and so you'd be doing these short little windows of writing like every third year or whatever whereas now I've really sort of fallen back in in love with that you know process of just constantly writing constantly working on stuff constantly creating rather than I suppose the, the little blocks of being a creator and the massive blocks of just being a performer so yeah, it's a it's a nice way to do it. It's a nice, I suppose, change of pace as well as I get older. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um, so what's Permafog up to now? Are you got are you working towards another release or something? Man? Yeah, we've got <laughs> that. That's another one. We've got probably, I suppose, three quarters of the songs written. Just need uh, drums done and vocals done. So that's that's all covered along pretty hard. So me and um, Ryan, the other guitarist, we've, we're, we're pretty, we're pretty much, or we're, we're getting really close at least to having, yeah, having, having the basis of all the album written. So, so that's that's sort of been one. I mean, the, the first album that we released, man, that took, I reckon that was about five years we <laughs> working on that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. every time we'd sort of get somewhere with it, I'd end up off on tour with Psychroptic or. You know, people get busy with work and because five piece band and we're all good mates. So like when we kind of catch up, we end up spending a lot of time hanging out and not as much time <laughs> working on stuff as what we should. But, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, it's all about the fun of it, isn't it? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Um, back to Domination Campaign. So obviously, you know, it's just the two of you. Yeah, Is there any chance we'll see a live domination campaign at some point is that something you'd like to do yeah that's that's been uh big on the cards so that that's another thing me and me and joe sort of spoke about that in it would have been january this year i was sort of saying to him how i'd you know i'd really like to be doing it live he sort of said the same thing and as it is um cam grant our original bass player from psychroptic he's still very close friend of mine only lives down the road from me he was talking about how he's been missing doing shows and you know been keen to get back into playing again and then so the idea came up of why don't we get cam to come into domination camp playing play bass and you know turn it turn it into a live band so probably not yeah not hard touring or anything like that but doing some local shows and you know, future festivals and stuff like that would be cool, but but yet again, it's finding the time to actually <laughs> get it all together. So, yeah, yeah. so we we are hoping that I mean, some sometime, hopefully, early next year, it might it might come to life. So yeah, fingers cool. crossed with that. So I I went out and bought a brand new guitar today, actually, in, in anticipation of that. Nice, mate. Happening. Have you got a handy? What what is it? What'd you get, man? I got yeah, it's right here next to me. I've got a Jackson Rhodes. Beautiful man, yeah, yeah. Went for the seven string. I've never had a seven string before, but with um domination campaign stuff, it's tuned to well Storm of Steel was tuned to drop A, so 
trying to do that and keep stable tuning on a six string was a bit of a bastard. So I figured I needed to get myself a pointy guitar for it anyway. So yeah, man, yeah. I figured I'd, I'd go all in and <laughs> so, yeah, it's good fun. It sounds yeah. heavy. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I've got a Jackson 5V tune today as well. It's lovely, man. Yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, nice it's, and low, it, you know? Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. A weird, it's a weird one, though. So I've gone from playing uh, LTD Eclipse, so basically the smallest guitar you can get, get to yeah. a seven-string, basically, baritone yeah. piece. So it's like it feels this total opposite end of what I'm used to, so yeah, yeah. I've been I've been tinkering around with it for a few hours tonight, trying to get comfortable on it. But I'll, I'll get there. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's not how comfortable they are; it's how sick they look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Um. So you're you're still in Tassie, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah cool. What's the uh What's the metal scene like near where you are? Like, are there many local gigs to check out and that kind of thing? Like, not a lot. Not yeah. a lot. I have been going to. I've been going to more gigs, sort of over the last twelve months, than I have for a long time. But it's still, you know, there's there's not a lot. I think the the last thing I went to was actually King Parrot were down oh, yeah, a few yeah. months ago. So that was that was cool. But I, like, as far as I can tell, there is a few younger bands kicking around down here now. But I just I don't think there's just not a lot of shows going on at the moment, which it kind of sucks, but it's really, you know, Tassie's always been one of those places where, you know, there'll be a couple of years where there'll be, you know, a young crew of dudes or whatever that will get right into it. There'll be shows flat out and stuff, and then all of a sudden it'll just die. So, yeah, yeah. There's a good. I can't even think of what they're called. Oh. No, it escapes me. It's it's a it's a bunch bunch of the <laughs> a bunch of the old dudes from the scene from from up north of Tassie. They uh they've they've been putting putting a few shows on. That's like uh, that's real sort of brutal death grind slam sort of stuff. They call it dad slam because they're all in their fifties. <laughs> yeah, nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's them and there's um, another another death metal band, Gay. They're sort of that slamming sort of stuff, but. Yeah. Yeah, there's a fair few few bits and pieces around, but just not as not as many gigs as what I'd like. But you know, it might pick up again hopefully with any luck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what have you been listening to lately? What kind of stuff are you, you know, listening to? Recently, have we been? Oh, I've been listening to as much new stuff. I I do I I often I, well. So one thing I've been getting into a, a bit lately is um, all this. What do you call it? It's like the the new bands doing the old school death metal stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, all that sort of yeah throwback to the old days stuff. Um, yeah. I suppose there's one band I check been checking out a lot of is a band called Sedimentum. The sort right. of that old school death metal. I think they're Canadian. Um, there's another band, Hebephrenic, Aussie band, those yeah. sick, Golgoth and Remains, their latest yeah. album, another Aussie yeah, band. Yeah, yeah. So I've, been, I've actually been checking out a bit of the Aussie stuff, but the other, the other stuff I've been, <laughs> I've been listening to a lot is, um, I've been listening, getting getting back into a lot of um, old school hardcore stuff, like uh, Biohazard, yeah. Marauder, Hatebreed, mm-hmm. a lot of that, that sort of stuff. That's that's always the good gym music, so yeah, cool. But that's 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 the one I've been sort of going back to a lot lately. But yeah, a lot of a lot of black metal as well. Always yeah. a lot of that. Yeah, what kind of what kind of black metal? Like like yeah, I don't. They haven't played Black Woman before this, right? Before the band you were talking about, you know, Permafog. Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't. I mean, we we've, we've been going, we've, we've been going for probably about eight or nine years now but oh, yeah, yeah. i've always always been a big big fan of the genre since you know back in the mid 90s hmm. so I'm, i still i still listen to a lot of that the the sort of classic classic old stuff your yeah, emperors yeah Dr. Roth, all that stuff but uh, i've been I checked out the what was it 
bloody um, like Norgevel, some of those newer ones, Jevil, uh, Autumn Rife. A lot of the the newer Norwegian stuff's actually really sick as well. But yeah. that you know, old old black metal scene at the moment's really good. Really, a lot of lot of really good creative stuff coming out too, and a lot of really fast shit as well, which is yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is right up my alley. So latest Marduk album that was that was another. Yeah. Oh, that's super fast, right? It's fucking. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was on high rotation. All the Marduk yeah. stuff. That's that's yeah. still on high rotation at my place. So. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. Um. So yeah, Psychoptic is playing Electric Eye Festival over here in Frio. I'll be there. I'm looking forward to it, man. October. Yeah. Oh, um, it's, gonna, it's gonna be. Yeah. Sick. It's gonna be. I think. Um. What I see, I saw in one of the the bits of promo about it that it's been. I think it's been like six years or something since we've been up to WA. So yeah, sure, man. Well, yeah. I was trying to work it out the other day, and then I I saw a little thing that said, "Yeah, first trip up, up there in six years." I think it was. I was like, "Fucking hell, mm. it's been a long time." Well, it's a long, long way, you know. It's a long way. Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> man, the flights are getting out of hand. How expensive yeah, they to really get are. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys must just feel stuck up there. Yeah, it's a bit, man. Pretty, but, you know, pretty cheap. A bit cheaper for you guys to go over to Indo, wouldn't it? Than yeah, it probably. Get, yeah, get yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, it's mental, eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. You guys are coming over, so I'm happy about that, man. It's uh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, man. Well, uh, I'll see you there, man. Have a good one. Um, thanks, no. for, thanks for the chat, man. No worries. Cheers, man. Cool. Have a good one. Get see you later. later. Is Jason, and I'm looking forward to seeing Psychoptic play WA again next weekend at Electric Eye Festival. Links below for tickets. Uh, up now, I speak to Emily, uh, the front woman, once the only person fronting the band of Soul Dusk. Um, it's neo folk black metal. Interesting stuff. Here she is. This is Emily. You started uh, Soul Dusk as a solo project originally, right? Yes, it was just me and my uh, my acoustic, really, and SoundCloud, yeah, <laughs> and my yeah. SoundCloud mates, basically. Yeah. Uh, and I just uploaded stuff, and it just kind of grew from there. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so uh, your debut album, Lunar Falls, um, 2019, came out through like Northern Silence Productions, a German label. Um, I guess they heard the EP, right? Like, how how did that happen? How did you get together with them? I sent a, I, I had my uh, album ready to be released. I had everything sorted, graphics, everything. Oh, yeah. uh, it would been mastered. I, I'd done it properly. It wasn't my home studio. It was like with a proper producer. And um, yeah, they responded to it. I, I had a couple of other nibbles from other labels as well, but Northern Silence were that. The guy that runs that, Torsten, is like he's just passionate about atmospheric black metal. And the, although my music isn't strictly that, there was an overlap. Mm. So uh, yeah, I was very happy because he curated his audience really well, and so his audience really welcomed the project. And yeah, I was I was actually surprised because a lot of his uh, roster is very, you know, like much heavier, and Lunar Force wasn't that. Mm. But the aesthetic was, there's, there was an overlap there. With, yeah, so stoked, really happy, and very blessed. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, when you were still a solo act, did you do live shows back then at all? Yeah, believe it or not, I, <laughs> I don't know now, I, I, I laugh at my bravado. Like, uh, I did support for a null draft when they come when they came out yeah. and it's like how the hell did that like it was just me another acoustic guitarist and a Jim Bay player it was just three of us and it's a good cheap quick opening act you know but yeah I, I, I opened for Zealand Arda um, Elevati uh, it was uh, like there was quite a, a lot and people were curious I guess and I felt very grateful to have those exposures so, yeah that's cool. Um, and now you're a quintet, right? Like, um, how did you, yeah. you get together with, with the rest of the band? Are they 
people that you knew already? Like, what are the connections there, you know? Yeah, I think I approached a few people. I, mean, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I definitely was looking to level up, uh, like, with the um, live performance. I don't think it's good to mislead people to think that it was just going to be, you know, oh, here's Soldark and they've heard Luna Falls and they think they're going to get Luna Falls and they get acoustic guitar. I needed to level up and... I needed to get people that could do, like, reproduce the sound live. Yeah. So I I knew a couple of really good musicians, and especially Shane Mulholland, who was in a band, is in a, in a band called Myriad Drone, and he's also in a tech death band called Zestiron, who were based in New Zealand. So he's got the chops, he had the technical know-how, and we kind of elevated it, and then the drummer came with him and he was a gun and then uh yeah i had to audition i guess yeah now that i look back i had to audition a bass player and found pip and then uh hayley the violinist put her hand up she joins us occasionally so she's like please you know can i join and i'm like how is this happening you know people are asking to join this project so i feel very grateful about that and um and yeah, it kind of, it's kind of, Josh Taylor was the other guitarist who was with me from the start, just doing acoustic stuff with me, because that's my biggest love is acoustic guitar and the different emotions that that, that instrument can really, is such a simple instrument, but it's, yeah, it, it's got a lot of voices. So, yeah. yeah. Um, has the writing side of things changed since you've had the other members? Like, it's a blessing and a curse, Ben. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I had a writing session last night, with Shane. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I love him dearly, and I respect him so much as a song, as a composer, co-composer. Yeah. Are you a musician yourself? Yeah, yeah. So you understand when you work with other people, it's. You bounce off each other, you can't be shy, you kind of yeah. go, how about this? And they'll go, eh, it's not working for me. And so it's very much got to not have any ego. Yeah. So we worked on this on this one piece. I like working on my own, right. But yeah. you, you're in your own echo chamber though, so you're not getting edited, you're not growing. Yeah. Whereas because I'm with two other composers now who have a lot to offer with Songcraft, uh, I kind of have to really listen and and go with them. And yesterday we were nutting out one section of this new folk song that we're doing, and Shane's like, "Yeah, let's go, let's go down this road." And we went down that rabbit hole, and we're laying harmonies, and we're going nuts in it, and we're enjoying it. And then he's listened to it, and you're like, "Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if I like that." And I'm like, <laughs> "You know." Whereas I like to work differently. I like to marinate an idea i like to play around with uh not really commit to it and try different things and then go you know that's the one that's that that one stayed with me that one stayed with me i i went to bed and all i could hear was that and that's when i know for me that so my process is quite different <laughs> it's just mm. but yeah i i do really enjoy working with others and i like pushing others too so if they're receptive to that, and which both guys are, then that's a blessing. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um, so yeah, Antithesis uh, came out earlier this year through Napalm. That's cool. Um, so uh, how was the recording on this one? Did you use any of the producers you'd used before, or is this kind of like a whole new experience for this one? Yeah? So this one is uh, yeah. A lot of people are getting their name wrong. It's actually Antithesis. Oh, and sorry. Texas. Oh, yeah, no, there you go. Right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's something that I really should have uh, had some foresight because you immediately think antithesis, which is, it, I don't mind people getting it wrong because in some way it's uh, antithesis, antithesis means to bloom, to flower yeah. in Greek, and then antithesis is, is almost the opposite, which is mm. it means to go against yeah. so there's elements of antithesis in antithesis but uh with this one yeah i i uh yeah we we did a lot of demos so we went to a producer it didn't work out with that producer 
uh, he had more of a raw kind of uh, hardcore background. Sure. So it's a very different, I mean, if you get a mix metal, it's just, especially with, you know, strings and then acoustics and you got djembe and then you got blast beats. It's just so fast and, 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 and challenging, can be challenging. So then we ended up going with Troy McCosca, who worked with Neo Plibiscaris and worked with a whole sack of other people. He's an amazing live sound engineer. And uh, his partner's a vocal coach, so it was awesome. We'd rock up and, you know, like get some tips on vocalization. And yeah, it was it was a really good experience. And yeah, it was sad that it didn't work out with the first producer, but at some point we just went, this is not working, we need to like redirect you know our production stuff so that was shitty <laughs> but you get that that's yeah. life <laughs> yeah yeah that's <laughs> cool um and you're involved with uh heritoire right the german black metal band you've done some research ben <laughs> uh i used to do a cover of uh their song uh which was a cover of an austere song mm. so uh I loved their version of it. I really resonated with that. And then I'd do it on my live sets, just when it was me and the, the other acoustic guitarist and the gem bay player. And it would always go down well. People just loved it. Uh, just for a moment, it was called. And they heard it and they're like, can you do some stuff on our, can you, can you record some stuff with us? And they were, yeah, they were really gracious. And they're, they're involved with that whole black gay scene, which is, They've got good mates in Olsest and Sylvain, yeah. Yeah. and yeah, that's that's like a it's a new emerging I'd say sound. Uh, it's not that well known, Black Gaze, but it's I don't know it's it's blast beats, but a lot of a lot of kind of shimmery tremolo kind of sounds. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's a new newish kind of genre, I guess. Yeah, cool. Um, what are you, what have you been listening to lately? What kind of bands? Oh, uh, Ben, I'm, I listen to I listen to metal sometimes when I'm at the gym because I'm in, that's my daily routine. But I I like to not listen to stuff that's too similar to my musical swampland, and so I listen to soundtracks. I listen to. Um, and dance music like I listen to I, I like stuff that has energy to it or I listen to uh, folk artists a lot singer songwriters and listen to their vocals I listen to opera I listen to fucking everything I, I love music and I used to say oh everything except country and then Josh Taylor who's the other acoustic guitarist is we went on a road trip with Wagga, and he's he's basically said, "Have you listened? Have you heard of uh, uh, Twyla Childers?" And I went, "What? What is? What's that?" And he put it on, and I was crying, like listening to alternative country and the, the emotion and the simplicity of the and the rawness of just an acoustic guitar and a voice, and it takes me back to exactly why I am doing music, which is it's. You can't, there's nothing else that is, uh, evokes the same kind of emotional response as just truth and emotion, pure emotion from another human and you just go, okay. So I listen to a lot of stuff. I, I was, my, my Spotify and my Bandcamp stuff is varied, just depends on what mood. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so you signed to an overseas label yeah like um with this the last release and everything is there opportunities for shows around where napalm is yeah so they've been nagging us because they're based in austria and they're like mm. come on you need to come over we need to get that exposure and mm. uh we have been working on it we got uh we have a plan to go to the uk so nice. we did uh did a support, we did the tour support for Agalock, who were like one of my biggest inspirations. And yeah, we're, we're going to be there with them again next year in Scarborough in the UK. 
and we're just shaping a little tour while we're there to see just yeah just play some dates with some friends and i've hit, hit the hero to our boys up as well i said and sylvain as well so they're, they're all uh winding down there there's summer festivals now so all the booking agents will be back in front of their laptops uh grinding out more uh, dates and yeah shows and stuff so hoping to yeah. play some more shows there that's cool um, and uh, coming up very shortly, uh, you're playing Electric Eye Festival over here in um, in Perth in Frio. Yeah, um, have you you've been over here before? Right? I've never been to Perth. Oh, there you go. Cool. Uh, right. awesome. So, I'm I'm very very excited. We're not staying for very long, but I think it's exciting. I've heard really good things about the scene there, hmm. and I've heard like, and Jessica is like. She's an amazing promoter. She's on it. She's, I don't know. It's really good to work with people like that. So I'm excited and yeah, I, I'm excited to, to meet a lot of people from the scene and, uh, and other bands as well. Yeah. So it's a wonderful opportunity. So when it got offered, we're just like, you want to go? And everyone's like, hey, let's go. So right. yeah, road trip. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, that's great. Cool. Well, look, I'll be there. Um, Emily, thanks for your time. It's been cool to chat, and thanks, I'll, uh, ben. I'll see you at Electric Eye. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Last of all, I had a chat with Corey Davis. Corey is uh, a guitarist in Freedom of Fear, and we get into that. But we also talk about his other band, Decidia, who are making their way to Fremantle for the Electric Eye Festival. Uh, here he is. This is Corey. I read that you guys are uh, mixing your second album at the moment, The City, or is that right? Yeah, 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 that's correct. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we've, like, pretty much just finalised the mix, like, at this uh, current point in time and uh, ready to get it mastered, um, like, probably by the end of this week or, like, start of next week, which is exciting. Um, and, yeah, getting it mixed by Sam Ballin, uh, yeah, from uh, Caligula's Horse, so he's you know, usually responsible for the majority of their mixes and um, yeah, it does a great job and he's, he's done an awesome job so far with this album. So yeah. <laughs> That's great, man. Um, when do you think we'll hear some of that? Like anything planned or? Uh, potentially like early next year, I think. Like, you know, by the time we sort of like, uh, you know, uh, get the sort of timeline running and we've got the artwork all done, but uh, yeah, I think we'll just make sure we've got everything pressed and, and ready to go. But uh, yeah, expecting early next year, I think at this point for like a single or two to be out. Yeah, cool. Um, have you played any of these ones live yet? Like you've been trying them on stage at all? Yeah, we, we played a couple live actually, um, but not for a while. Like we've, we've kind of, uh, while finalizing the album, like been like on a little bit of like a show and touring hiatus just to kind of keep the focus like on everything. But um. So about a, I think about a year ago, roughly from now, we debuted like a couple of them, um, and we played another new one on, uh, what was it, Froth and Fury, yeah, oh, yeah. to the end of last year, and um, yeah, yeah, they're feeling really, really good to play, like, I'm probably more comfortable with those ones at the moment, just probably because we just recorded them, but hmm. yeah, yeah, they're, they're feeling really good to jam, and um, yeah, keen, keen to play more though. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, how's, how does writing work for Decidia? Like, uh, are you all bringing riffs or is someone kind of in charge? Like, what's the go? Uh, no, it's pretty, it, it's a pretty democratic process, like, overall. Um, like, between myself, Neil, and Liam, um, so, like, Neil, Neil on bass and Liam on drums, uh, we, we pretty much do the bulk of, like, the instrumental writing we do, while we do all the instrumental writing, um, hmm. between us, uh. And sometimes, like, certain songs, like, there's a couple of songs that are um, more just more or less my writing um, for the most part with two. And there's a few from Neil um, on this album as well where it's more or less his writing um, instrumentally and everything else. And then, uh, yeah, a few others that are just kind of mixed up as well where it's like we've all kind of contributed um, and had more of, like, a joint writing process where we've, like, either jammed the riff or, you know, sent ideas to each other and then someone's, like, built on top of it. So... It's, it's a pretty democratic writing process. We kind of get everything fleshed out, have some melodies uh, in mind for the top of sections or whatever, and then kind of like arrange that with the vocals or lead, like 
guitar parts or synths or something, you know. So we kind of like build on top of the structure once it's done um, initially, uh, and and kind of like incorporate Mitch's like lyrics and vocal ideas and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, everyone kind of plays a uh, plays a role in the creative process. Hmm. Um, and you've been a band since 2010, so like what 14, 15 years, something like that. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Has much changed uh, with the way like the writing and recordings kind of done over that time? Yeah, like, t yeah, to be honest, like we, we've become more self-reliant with like recording um, over the years. Like, uh, so like with this latest album and even the last one, but this one especially, I've like taken on a lot more of the like production and recording and editing duties. So like for this one um it's the first time that i've like recorded all of the vocals uh for mitch as well as like done uh, editing and stuff on the last one we still did vocals at against the grain um which is like where we always tracked our drums um and a lot of other things i did all the rhythms last time there as well or the bulk majority of them um but this time it's been pretty much like all in this room that i'm sitting in <laughs> like almost just with the exception of the drums and then uh, a few of the bass tracks that neil did at his house but yeah, we, we've become a lot more kind of just like independent, I guess, with the uh, with the with the recording and um, and sort of editing and production aspects of it. Uh, and yeah, I guess the writing probably has been like a little less group done over the years, probably just because the schedules get busier and like, you know, we're like not like yet like, you know, like fresh out of high school sort of like age anymore. We're all getting together like every few days and you know going through ideas anymore so it's a little bit more like uh a little bit more sort of like just i guess digital where it's just like we're sending each other things and you know um and a lot of the time it's just like oh well, i haven't come up with like most of the songs so here's that song and same with neil we'll just get into a bit of a writing um you know writing mode and then like you know spit out a song out of nowhere so like so it's probably become a little less like kind of group focused overall um and and yeah the uh, recording process a lot more sort of self-reliant uh, these days yeah, cool. Um, the video for Hope's Remorseful Retreat with all the, you know, animals and everything. Is, does, um, does one of you have some interesting pets or did you get an animal person in for that one? No, no, we, 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 we got a specific, like, animal, uh, exotic animal um, person in for that. And she brought in, like, all those sort of, like, snakes and there was, like, an owl and, uh, yeah, some, like, crazy bugs and yeah yeah all this weird stuff and it was like yeah it was it was hard for me to kind of like i don't know totally deal with uh, some aspects of it because it was like i don't know sometimes certain bugs and animals can like cringe me out of close but <laughs> yeah, yeah. but yeah a lot of a lot of that choreographing and like uh kind of like mapping out of the visuals like uh mitch worked on relatively uh closely uh hmm. you know and, and sort of he, he's good at doing those sort of like visual maps and putting together some sort of ideas uh like that um but yeah, yeah, none of us, none of us had like our own pets or anything, you know. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so progressive metal, like it's, it can encompass a lot of different styles or sub styles, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, are you as a band kind of into eclectic, a bunch of stuff, or are there a handful of bands that where you're all like, yes, we worship this band, you know? Yeah. Oh, there's like, there's definitely like a few, like, I think like probably like a band favorite for us is like Opeth. You know? Oh yeah. yeah. And, they've like been like you know since like high school for the majority of us i think like uh or like i think pretty much for all of us um you mm. know that was their real early days um and then like i'm into like me personally you know i find myself like i'm mostly just still stick within a lot of metal stuff but i i, I studied like a like a lot of classical music at the con when i did my like a uh, like degree yeah I, I i like a lot of like i like a lot of classical music and classical guitar specifically um so that sort of spills out a bit as well, but mostly into the like metal genres, like you know, ninety five percent of it for me. And but a lot of the stuff is a mixture of like death metal and progressive styles, and um, like I really like a lot of my cheesy power metal bands as well. Yeah. Um, and I kind of like I, I, I like like some of the glam you know, era, and like I just kind of like rotate around a lot of that and a lot of seventies rock and that sort of stuff um like both liam and neil they uh both play in like a band called cliff racer and that's kind of like funk funk rock sort of stuff like they love their sort of funk and uh jazz crossover uh sort of stuff so there's like definitely uh some intersections where it's like you know they love chili peppers and stuff and i can't stand chili peppers so mm. there's like a few intersections where we don't really collide liam doesn't like power metal at all so it's like 
there's there's aspects there, but it's a good thing you know for the writing overall because you know it's stuff spills into it that it's like oh, i wouldn't have personally put that there and then like, you know you grow to like it a lot so yeah yeah oh, that's cool man. um do you still play any classical stuff like outside of metal yeah uh, uh, yeah a little bit but mostly to teach these days because oh, yeah. I, I find like yeah I'll, I'll i'll do lessons and um teach uh, a few different students are kind of like more strict classical students and um i like i have a lot of fun teaching it uh but i don't practice it really as much as i used to um like especially not back in the uni days but it's more just like that it's almost like a separate guitar, uh, separate guitar, separate instrument altogether from mm. electric guitar. You know, like it's it's like I feel like if I do a lot of practice on classical, I, I really need to kind of go get recalibrated on the electric, um, and it's it just feels different, different size necks and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, so I, I tend to like not put as much time into that when it's like oh, there's way more happening with the electric that I need to focus on. So it's it's sort mm. of the priorities shifted. But I do like really love sitting there and like playing pieces and. Um, it's it's good just having like a total solo instrument that's really like totally acoustic as well sometimes yeah yeah it's yeah. just a different vibe <laughs> yeah it's cool um i think neil's bass guitar is one of the biggest i've ever seen as a monster <laughs> um what's your go-to guitar and like tuning for um for decidia oh uh, yeah it's a it's um a jordan reynolds which is the same one uh, that neil has actually is the bass and he's like a local luvia in adelaide um, cool and uh, he, he does his custom builds and I've got two through him at the moment, but like, unfortunately they're like, in, on, like they're upstairs on the other side. I'll no, sure. to show you, I've just got these monstrosity here, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, the, the Jordan Reynolds guitars are, are awesome. They're like, they, they feel great. It's the, like, they're the best guitars that I've got for um, like a nice seven string that's like intonated well and, mm. and, and has good tension and everything else, you know, just, it feels right. Um, so we both play his his stuff and it's definitely the main uh yeah main guitar for sure yeah. um but yeah neil's bass is like yeah it's huge <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's Yeah>. giant. <laughs> um what's your freedom of fear setup like for guitar is it much different no uh, not at all actually like not with the guitar itself like and um, hmm. the tuning and everything so um it's it's the exact same actually so like same same uh main purple one that i'm using at the moment uh like the candy purple thing with maple fretboard i just use that for both because they're both um you know six string standard tuning and then we just rotate between like having the low b or low a on the uh on the seventh string um yeah and both bands do that so it works out like really well like i don't feel like i need to have two separate setups or anything like that um it's good yeah because i'd rather just be on the one guitar and stay comfy there between both bands yeah that's cool yeah. um i watched that uh video where freedom of fear played the adelaide guitar festival and you yeah. guys put out the cacophony cover that marty freeman band um uh, yeah yeah there must have been a lot of rehearsal time on that man. Like that's yeah. those shreddies you know <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Well, heaps of solo practice time, but it was it was like actually really quite rushed, like for us to. I think it was like maybe a month or a month and a half at most or something. We we ended up kind of getting that together. Um, and yeah, but that was a monster, like to learn that one. And I was like, to be honest, I like, felt like pretty stressed before that show. I was like, this is like a big, <laughs> this yeah. is a big thing to take on, and it's one of those things where it's just notes just flying continuously for like four or five minutes or whatever, and then. You know, you feel like it's like, well, if I just lose my spot, like I've just got to stop playing and get back into it, and that's gonna suck. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so, so it was a bit stressful, like taking that one on. It's like, oh, no rhythm section time to just like hang back and get my bearings again. You know, it's just go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. And did you know you were gonna be, you know, recorded and everything? Like, was that the plan? You know, getting it out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah, definitely. So that added to the stress. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> well, it came out well, man. It sounds sick. It's really good. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, is Freedom of Fear working on any new stuff? Have we got anything coming out from them? Yeah, yeah, definitely as well. So like, um, that's uh, we've just had the drums track actually with Liam as well. So like Liam, Liam, um, like you know, like is is uh, between uh, both both bands as well, and uh, mm -hmm. and he he did the drum tracking um, for the upcoming album this time. We did that with uh, Dan Prevalent at uh, Bushido Studios, and uh, so yeah, we we flew over and spent the better better half of a week over there and um, sort of sorted out the drum tracks. They sounded great and. Yeah, both uh, pretty much uh, between that uh, album, I think uh, Matt's written six 
full length songs I believe uh, from memory and, and I've done three for that as well and uh, awesome. yeah and it's come together sounding fantastic so like yeah super super stoked I'm, I feel really lucky actually like it uh, with both albums growing but it's, it's funny as well it feels like it's been ages you know like they've both been you know like a long time coming it feels like um, but yeah both both coming up and sounding great now so yeah <laughs> so, that's cool yeah um i saw freedom of fear here with carcass earlier this year um do, and you guys have been here before do you think we'll see uh over perth way again anytime soon for, yeah, for yeah, um yeah. yeah yeah for sure for sure like where you definitely want to like uh keep like a regular kind of cert, like you know uh national circuit i think uh yeah. going and keep up some good sort of live momentum so like yeah we're we're super keen to get back to perth and yeah I do like playing in perth a lot like as well you know i feel like it's like a I feel like culture wise it feels like another Adelaide like in a way and um, yeah, yeah. Like, it seems to always have like a really thrive like there's like some people have you know I'll hear from people who are in Perth like some people feel more negatively about the music scene and other people are quite positive about it but from my experience it's always just been like like packed shows like like whether they're smaller local size ones or big international and like everyone gets into it heaps and buys merch and like hangs out and so like so perth has always just been like heaps pleasurable there's never been like a really there's never been like a bum trip to um perth to play. so yeah we definitely yeah. want to keep coming back and it felt like it was too long to get over there in the first place so yeah oh good to hear man yeah. so as you can see electric eye festival is going to be a great Perth Metal Day uh, at Frio Social, so make sure you get down there. I am going to be there. Russell and Records has a stall. We will be able to get the products that you see next to me right now. Um, lots of good stuff there, and um, every purchase gets a freebie. I've got freebies to give away as well. Say hello, grab some stuff, and check out some awesome metal which is happening this coming weekend at Frio Social. Cheers for watching. Remember, subscribe for more metal. Lots more interviews and metal stuff coming up as always. Everyone, see ya.